Hey guys, Majefries here, and welcome back to the Majefries Network on OpenTCD. We start by hopping upon this train here, which is the all-stopping electric from CS, which is the station we built last episode, to WJ. Uh, there's no point really in staying on this train, because I've been staying on it for quite a while. You might see the date has progressed a fair amount, it's because I've done a lot of fixing and tweaking off-camera. Didn't record it, like I said I wouldn't do. Um, mainly because it was all... Over the period of 24 hours, it was tiny little 5 minute per session tweaks. So it wasn't really worth recording anyway. Uh, but I did also say that I wasn't going to record it, so I didn't. But this is the main line uh, that we built 3 episodes ago, 2 episodes ago. And there's one of our East Coast trains, which is running nowhere near full. So I might need to work on that a little bit. But, um,. I'm going to do a little bit more of this today to try and extend some services here because you might have noticed we got some trains that queue up this one for example is the semi-fast electric and it ends up queuing up behind some of these which is a bit annoying I could build some crossovers in fact I think I will build some crossovers so let's see you just got to find out where this stops so you stop there obviously uh, do you stop in the turn back platform? I'm not sure if you do because this service is going to be extended more. That's one of the things I built was the turn back platform. It's the same platform as we had before. I just got a new track that goes underneath. Uh, okay, so here could be a good candidate for a crossover. If I put one like there, actually no, it wouldn't go there. It would go here. So actually back here would be a better place for it somewhere here would be a better place which means this one and this one needs upgrading okie dokie and then here that's annoying I wanted to build that there can't build it there so I'm gonna have to build it here instead I guess and upgrade you whoops upgrade you and you to path signals so that gets the semi fast on and off that track um, at this point yeah I'm gonna put one here and I'm gonna put one here there you go straight away semi fast train does its thing I've done that again that's annoying you there you there you there and this one here so that gets those semi-fasts going. I'm going to close this window now. No, no, no. I needed that one open. You. You'll do. This should show the stops. Yeah. Good. Right. Try that again, shall we, without closing the, the relative window. Um, so you've got some crossovers here. Actually, I don't need those crossovers. I'm going to leave those crossovers, but the train does stop here, so I'm going to need it to, to do that. Uh, here would be the next one. So I'm going to stick a crossover here. And I'm going to stick a crossover here. That sort of works. So you and you and you and you. There we go. So that's those ones sorted. And then, although again, these two stations are served. I'm just going to add random crossovers then. I might as well. Just so that express trains and, and local trains can cross over. Because that's you know, if you go on real life railways, there are lots of crossovers. And the reason being is if a line's shut for whatever reason, um, trains can use any of the other tracks. That's why those real life crossovers exist. On here, it's so that the semi fast and the, ex and the uh, all stoppers don't get in each other's way. So let's see. There's no stop at Medhead. In fact,. Is this showing stops again? It is. Okay. So there's no stop at New Fluworth. There's no stop at 
Finhill. There's no stop at Pintbridge. There's no stop at Medhead or Prondingston. So Rinning Hall is the next one. So I'm going to have to put the crossover in the here. Upgrade you. Upgrade you. Quickly pop that one in there. Upgrade you and you. Did I put that in the I'll put that in the wrong way around. Duh. No, that's not gonna work. Damn it, that's annoying. Alright, hang on. Fix it, fix it, fix it. No time restriction or anything like that, which is quite relaxing. It's gonna have to go here. Like so. You and you upgrade. Okay. And then Fronting Hall, yep. Is a candidate. And Binborn, it doesn't stop. Have I got anywhere around here where I could build a crossover? Uh, not really, is the answer to that question. Although, here, I could put one and do that. And then that will go there. On the return, where's it going to go on the return? Here, I suppose. Like that. And then you upgrade, you upgrade. As you can see, the express train shouldn't be interrupted by this anyway. There's a 25 mile per hour difference. Shouldn't be that extreme. Hopefully. Who knows. And then finally here. Uh, I'm going to have to put another crossover in to get the train back on the right section of track. So I'm going to put one here, like that, and I'm going to put one uh, let's see here. Alright, upgrade you and you upgrade you and you there we go so that's that done now that the, the, the semi fast should be able to cross over to and from the express tracks whenever needed perfect that wasn't actually what I wanted to do today but that's now been done today what I wanted to do today was introduce you to this guard city exchange now this is another idea that was suggested to me um, it's all to do with completely redoing this section of track here between GSG and Guard City Exchange which is going to be one of the central stations it's also going to be where one of the high speed lines runs from it doesn't look like much right now but there'll be platforms coming down this way big empty area so I thought why not fill it uh, this bridge I found something out about bridges and in fact you can see it in action here trains separate themselves by quite a small amount it's like dynamic blocks the signals are almost there just for aesthetic reasons and they don't actually serve much for purpose what that does mean is I can have this now as one continuous bridge that goes right across the bay which means no islands which means big river so I'm quite pleased with that idea and it's one that I'm going to put in straight away now there is a little bit of a hiccup here and especially at this end where trains are sort of waiting for the next block to clear excuse me I always record just after eating and it always shows quite obviously that I'm recording just after eating I do apologize guys anyway um, have you cleared the bridge yes you have I'm gonna get rid of these right all of this here is gonna be flattened and this here is gonna be flattened and this here is gonna be flattened now I need to get this train off this last bridge which it's not gonna do yet because there was another train in the way but now there isn't That's something else that I've tweaked as well is I've made sure these trains go into these platforms so that they don't have to cross over the entire track to get over to where they need to be uh, that should save some trouble as well. Right, let's build this bridge, shall we? We'll do this side first. Right the way over like that. I think we could do, yep, yep big 110 mile per hour viaduct. And another one like so. And then if I put you there like that. And this one here like this. I should be able to get the full dynamic effect going. 
Again, it doesn't show, but hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll see it in action in a second. This train here is going to be our test dummy, and this one. These are running pretty full, by the way. I'm very pleased with how how consistently full these trains are running through the centre section. Does this actually... Yeah, it does accept passengers now. I don't think it did when I first built it. But this, as you see now, is raised up as well. This used to be on the ground level. Now it's raised up by one. So that the city can actually grow around it and underneath it. I feel like that's better than just having a station on ground level with things sort of squeezed in around it. Whereas now, you know, roads can go under this bridge here. They can go under this bridge here. Uh, if necessary, I can raise the land here and build a tunnel underneath for the road. Just better ideas. Better ideas. Let's see, that's going to go. Yep, that's going to run through no problem. In this direction, we should be fine as well. Let's go wait for this train to make sure it clears the block. I had a bit of an issue where I had to manually tell the train to ignore the signal to get it to come through here. Bit of a pain, but it sort of fixed itself now. I haven't even checked these trains for ages. How well are these guys doing? They seem to be doing alright, actually. One passenger not on board. There is one empty seat in the entire train. Quite impressive. Right, this is working. The train's gone through the block. Good news. Alright then. So I suppose we should pick up where we left off last episode, which was... Um, actually, not that way. I said we were going to build to the north, didn't I? Uh, let's try and stick to the track if we can. This way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. Right, over here. Good. Now, remember from many episodes ago now, when we first built this, I said we're going to have the main main line I was going to cross a bridge going over the river. And the other two lines down here were going to be like a branch line to go somewhere else. We're going to implement that idea today to an extent. I'm just going to lower this land slightly and see if that looks any nicer. Not too bad I suppose. Make it look like the track's actually been built on a peninsula rather than um, just crammed in. Suspension? Yeah. Why not? And suspension. We'll come back to this main line. We're not actually going to build the main line today. But that's just there as a placeholder for future episodes. Also, this town's going to have to be remodeled slightly so the track can actually pass through. I do have a plan list somewhere on here that, that shows that. But I don't have a plan list for this branch line, so I'm sort of going to make it up on the fly. But I basically want it to come through... Do I want it to go through Ludhatton? I think I want it to go through Ludhatton. And Slenfing Hill. Let's do that. So again, we'll run it along the lake edge. Like so. I want to make sure that we've got plenty of space along here for the station. There might even be... Actually, no, not here. I was going to say there might be a turn-back siding for this station, but that seems pointless, building an extension to a, a main line or building a branch line just for one station. That seems... I mean, in real life, it, it, it's, it does exist, but for this, it seems very pointless. There we go. Nicely down the hill, actually. Quite a nice little step system pattern that we've got going there. And that there, like that, that there, like that. And we'll just do it like that and that. There we are. Right, and then we'll stick to the shelf for this little section. Game's starting to lag a little bit as well. I think that um, auto saves and stuff don't help the yearly budget summary and stuff but I think the the number of new GRFs we've got it's gonna chug a little bit but 
it's okay. It's it's stable. That's the main thing. It is stable. It's not going to crash. It's a tricky one with this game because it's an old game. It's based on an old whoops. Based on an old system. It's an updated version of an old game. So there's always a chance that it will struggle a little bit. But I do think for for the type of game it is and for the game that it's based on etc, it's very very stable. You know, you think about it. This is a game Compare it to City Skylines. If you add too many mods in Skylines, the whole game just goes completely. And that's a game that came out, what, last year? 2015? And yet, if you overload it, it crashes all the time. And yet, this is a game from the 90s that's been updated uh, for the 21st century, but it's still based on that old engine and that old code. And yet, it runs smooth as anything. And the map size is massive. I know it's got simple graphics and it's isometric, but it's very, very smooth. Very smooth. I think that's one of the reasons why I like it so much, is it's actually smoother than the original game. The original game, I had so many problems with it crashing. Well, actually, I say the original game. Transport Tycoon Deluxe, which is not the original game. Uh, it's the sort of re remake, if you like, of the original game. It's like the... It's not really a sequel because it was the same game re-released with more stuff added. But yeah, it was it was pretty cool. But it crashed a lot. It was a pain. That bit wasn't cool. But this game is very smooth. Right, so I'm building this track down here. Um, I'm thinking about station size. I don't want stations to be too big on this line basically because it's a simple branch line you know it's got overhead electrification sure but it's a simple branch line so I don't want to go way over the top with with like huge station sizes and massive trains I almost feel like six tile and five tile long is too much for this I think we need shorter I'm tempted to go for four that will involve editing some of the existing trains. Five is my absolute limit. And we have already got five five long trains running on the, the mainline route. So that will be doable. Uh, and that probably will be what I end up doing. It's it's a tricky one. Because again, in, in real life, you have like two car units running along the line. I think that's too too short for this. Maybe three. Maybe I'll just build all new trains. Or go into the withdrawn and see what trains we've got in there. So that's kind of what withdrawn was all about. See, I'm building tunnels and stuff. That's going to be our limit. So, yeah, three for Grant Hill City. How far am I building this line, by the way? <laughs> I'm sort of going and going and going without really finding an end point. I kind of want to terminate it soon. Maybe just follow this this line right now, go through these towns and then terminate it down in the valley. Let's see, we've got this little area here. Let's see, that's one of my new catchphrases that I want to get rid of. It's a bad habit of mine. Obviously is one of them, and I think I've dropped that already a couple of times today. And now let's see. I don't know. I just say things sometimes when I'm deep in thought and I'm looking for segue words. I'll say things like, let's see, and obviously. I'm one of these ones, I've w I watched a lot of American TV when I was younger. And so I've picked up a lot of American phrases, which I try very, very hard to not say in my videos. And it's not because I have a problem with it necessarily, but it's because I'm I'm British. I don't want to f to it to come across as though I'm trying to be American, because I'm I'm not. They are genuine phrases that I picked up upon, but I am British, you know, born and raised in the UK. So I don't want to be spouting too many American phrases, because that's not really who I am. It's what I was brought up on, but it's not who I am. Is there anyone else out there who does that, though? You sort of, you, you, you watch a TV show, and then you suddenly find yourself acting like the main character, or you find yourself saying what the main character says a lot. Um, I found myself relating more than I perhaps should have to Gregory House, which is not healthy in any way, sense or form.
But uh, yeah, that happened. So I became very heavily sarcastic. Uh, saved loads of lives. No, that bit didn't happen. But, you know, I became very sarcastic. And, I don't know. I just found it a relatable character for some reason. This is me trying to think of things to say in episodes. You can see I'm not very good at it. That's why I ask you guys for your input. You know, last time we talked about High Speed 2 a lot. And we talked about the UK rail industry as a whole. Um, I suppose I could talk about the UK rail industry. The crossrail trains... Uh, the first one has been unveiled, and it, it looks... I mean, I've seen pictures of it in my magazine, but it looks fake, <laughs> if if that makes sense. It looks like a CGI model still, um, which I suppose is a good thing, because it actually looks like what it's meant to look like, which you don't see that very often, really, in any kind of vehicle concept. They sort of they do the CGI drawing, and they say... Well, I say the CGI, they do the CAD drawing. Where did I get CGI from? I've been spending too much time in the media circle. You s you're shown the uh, the CAD drawing, and they say this is what it's going to look like, this is what it's going to do, and then you actually see the thing once it's built, and you look at it, and you just think, well, that looks nothing like it's supposed to. But I have to say, the crossrail trains are the first time in a long time where I've actually looked at something and thought, yeah, that is actually what it was meant to look like. Um, but it looks good. They look very nice. I haven't seen much inside them yet. But uh, outside, they look very nice. They've got the purple livery, which matches the... I mean, I, I keep calling it Crossrail. It's supposed to be called the Elizabeth Line, but I don't really... Uh, I watched Londonist say that it shouldn't be called something Line because it's not part of the underground, it's part of the overground. So they should call it the Elizabeth Railway, maybe, but not the Elizabeth Line. And I'm 100% behind that idea. Don't call it Line. You don't call the overground the overground line, you just call it the overground, because it's not the underground. So they should do that with with all of them, really. They should all be called... I mean, all the underground lines, fair enough, call them line. But, you know, the tram isn't called the line, it's just called the tram, Croydon tram. The overground is just called the overground, National Rail is called National Rail. They're not called lines. The crossrail is... I mean, it's it's sort of... It's under the same umbrella as the overground. It's It's... It's part of TFL, but it's an actual railway network separate to the underground. So it always it's always baffled me why they called it the Elizabeth Line. I've got nothing wrong with them naming it after the monarch. That's fine. You know, we've got the Victoria Line, so why shouldn't we have the Elizabeth Line? Two longest reigning monarchs. My problem is the fact that it's got the word line. Doesn't make sense. Right, I'm building a sort of temporary terminus here for now. Just so we can get some trains running. This will end up being, no doubt, an actual terminus as well. But for now, um, I'm going to put it under the temporary bracket. Okie dokie. And we want... I'm going to go for the seven length blocks again. Just because it gives us more leeway when it comes to building stations. Two, three, four, five, six. So there and there. But yeah, I, I like Crossrail. I think Crossrail is a very good idea. It was definitely needed. A new rail link across London was needed, no doubt. Um, there's a lot of controversy that so much money's been spent on London, whereas not a lot of money's been spent on sort of the the networks in the north. And again, I I can agree with that. And I think it's a justifiable argument. But then I also look at things like Metrolink in Manchester. They've been extending that constantly since it was first built. And a lot of money's gone into that. They've just spent a lot of money in Birmingham. Um, extending their metro. Or their tramway, really. It's not a metro. Uh, they've spent a lot of money extending their tramway. And... Newcastle have just announced plans to extend the, the metro service up there. Um, what's the other one I'm thinking of? High Speed 3. You know, High Speed 3 is a, is a big project. And that's. it sounds like that's going ahead with or without High Speed 2. Which is good news. That links the east coast up in the north to the west coast across the the, uh, the Pennines which is a mountain as we say mountain range it's not like the Himalayas or anything like that it's like uh, they're basically hills 
I think the Pennines are actually hills. I don't know where I got the word mountain from. I've been across the Pennines, I believe. So I definitely don't know where I got the word mountain from. But um, there is a lot of investment going on in the north of England. So I do... Again, I'm biased. You know, I'm a southerner. I support Newcastle United, and that's about as northern as I get. My dad's from the north, my grandparents are from the north, and I'm very proud to be part Geordie. But... When it comes to political things, I tend to consider myself a southerner. So, I feel London, being the capital of England, if there's anything wrong with the rail infrastructure, it should take priority over some other projects. So, for example, um, Crossrail, I felt should have taken priority, and has indeed taken priority, over some of the northern rail projects. And that is kind of what happened, and a lot of people complained and on the surface you can see why but I think when you actually you sit down and you work it out I think the money's gone to the right places first and it's a quite a controversial thing to say and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who disagree with me but I think once once you've got the capital sorted the economic benefits from that can then be used elsewhere in the country it's almost like you have to spend elsewhere to get the money to then spend where you want to spend it so you know, London is the financial capital of England. It's the political capital of England. It's the entire capital of England. But most of the financial side of, of Britain comes from the city of London. So, the actual proper city of London. Not as in Greater London, but the, the area of London that's known as the city of London. Which is also very confusing. London is made up of two cities. Don't know how many people know this. City of Westminster, where the Houses of Parliament are and um, Buckingham Palace I think is also in Westminster and you know some of the famous landmarks are in the city of Westminster and then you've got the city of London which is where buildings like the Gherkin are and the Cheese Grater and the Walkie Talkie and I, I nearly said the Shard but I don't think the Shard is part of the city of London at all it's, it's in London Bridge and I'm trying to remember what borough that is it's not Lambeth, is it? I don't think it is Lambeth. I need to re f freshen up on my uh, my boroughs a little bit. But yeah, that, it's very confusing to know that there's a, a, a London within a London, and London itself isn't actually London. You know, it's a total, it's a mind bender. You have to really focus to work that one out. But uh, it's true. There are two Londons, if you want to say it like that. Anyway, point I'm trying to make. Uh, do I want this here? I don't want this here. Point I'm trying to make is thus. <clears throat> it's the financial capital of England. So any financial gain from London will be spent around the country because it's, you know, it's where the money goes. The money goes all around the country. So Crossrail was a priority. There's, n there's only one real proper east to west line through London and that is the central line and it's congested it's heavily congested in fact if I grab my phone a sec sorry if you can hear my fan I'm just going to load up my tube map because I want to see um, so there's got adverts popping up now no nope, go away okay so the central line stops at stations like Liverpool Street it stops at Tottenham Court Road and it stops at Bond Street and I believe Bond Street I'm not 100% sure of actually but Tottenham Court Road and Liverpool Street are two stations on Crossrail so you can see already what Crossrail was designed to do it's designed to, uh, to get rid of congestion on the central line really the other east to west lines I mean you can sort of argue that the Hammersmith and City line and the district line are east west but the fact that they run as part of the circle as well not many people ride the line fully from east to west some do but most use it as a way of getting into central London uh, the Piccadilly line also goes from east to west but again most people use it to get into the centre of London but they're still going to be affected by Crossrail but I think the central line was the main reason because the central line is old the trains aren't great anyway I think they are getting new trains in the future but for now it's not brilliant and we were just crying out for a new east-to-west route. 
especially with Thameslink coming in as well. You know, Thameslink is a huge, um, a huge gain to the north-south network. The actual Thameslink route itself fully runs from um, Bedford to the north of London down to Brighton on the south coast. Uh, I think there's a potential for expansion to the north, although I'm not 100% sure. I'm trying to remember roughly where Bedford actually is geographically. Again, I should know my country better than this, but I do struggle sometimes. In fact, it's not that I struggle. It's not that I struggle at all. That's unfair. It's it's more a case of... I've been on most of these routes, but most of the time I'm sort of looking out the window not really paying that much attention to where we are. I'm sort of lost in thought. So, yeah, I guess it's, it's lack of attention more than anything that means I'm not 100% sure where everything is. What I do know is um, that is the the Midland main line. So it runs up to the Midlands. In fact, again, use my tube map because I believe it has National Rail on it as well. It does. So I was looking at St Pancras. Yeah, it's got the Thameslink line on here. So Centre Rail, as you know, on this map, back to game, this one here, um, is based on Thameslink. And Thameslink it runs through, uh, name some key stations on the route. So it runs through St Albans, which isn't far away from where I live. So if I ever want to get the train to St Pancras rather than King's Cross, I have to go all the way over to St Albans, which is a bit of a pain, but it's not too bad. Uh, getting parked there's a nightmare though. But it runs to places like West Hampstead where you can get onto uh, the Jubilee line or the Overground. It then goes to Kentish Town where you can change with the Northern line. And then it goes to St Pancras International. Once you go through St Pancras International, it then goes to Farringdon, which is part of the City Widen Lines, which I mentioned last episode. Um, and then it goes to City Thameslink, which is the weirdest station I've ever been to. In terms of... Uh, I mean, just the whole of it feels odd. It's it's like... It was a station that the track was built first, and then the, the trains were... Sorry, the track was built first, and then the station was built after. And that's very obvious when you're actually there. It's basically a hole in the ground. You know, it's, it's a box that the track runs through. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. It's just a very strange station. It's built on a heavy slope as well, because there's a big slope between Farringdon and Blackfriars, which is the next stop after City Thameslink. And it's just a, yeah, it's just a really strange station. City Thameslink. It's closed on Sundays. Um, and it's it's weird. It's a really long station as well to, co to accommodate Thameslink trains. But yeah, it's it, I just found it strange when I was there. Blackfriars, which is the station that's now built on a bridge. It used to be built on the north side of the Thames. Now it extends right across the south side of the Thames. And it's also a station where, uh, in the past, the terminating platforms were on the east side and the through platforms were on the west side. That made it very difficult to actually get trains to and from London Bridge and that route. So they actually changed it. They completely changed it. They rebuilt the entire station, reconfigured all of the track. So now that the terminating platforms are on the west side and the through tracks are on the east side. Um, try doing that you know, to a station. They're doing it with London Bridge at the moment as well. They're changing it from nine terminating platforms and six through to six terminating and nine through. That's going to take a long time to complete as well. I think t uh, two years time they're saying it should be finished. That's a long time to be re rebuilding a station. Luckily I have no intentions of going through London Bridge over the next couple of years, but some poor people do. So it's it's one of these ones where they're, they're supposedly doing it in order to improve congestion, but in doing so, they're actually making congestion worse. It's a very catch-22 situation. It will be great when it's finished, but for now, it's it's awful. It's a pain in the neck. And I did go there. I went to a Charlton match, Steamish versus Charlton, a couple of years ago, when they were sort of starting to do it. And yeah, it's it's... It's a pain. Um, it's a good reason why they're doing it. Don't get me wrong. But it's a pain. Right. I am 
finishing this off. I'm trying to do this whilst talking as well, so that it doesn't take forever. How long's this episode been? 34 minutes. So again, I've gone over my half hour allotted slot. Now, mostly it's because I'm messing around on my phone looking up tube maps, which I'm sure most people aren't actually that interested in. But uh, the point I was going to make was Centre Rail, or Thames Link, as it's now called, which is it's always been called. Centre Rail is its, uh, its homage. Anyway, it goes through Blackfriars, and then it goes to Elephant and Castle, and then it sort of spans off in all different directions. There's a loop line that goes via Wimbledon. Uh, there is a line that goes off to London Bridge, funny enough. There's a line that goes down sort of to the southeast. And then finally, there's a line that goes down via Croydon and goes down towards Brighton, which is the one that I wanted to talk about. It's the Bedford-Brighton line. Thameslink does some weird stuff south of the river. Not all, of, not all of the trains go where you expect. Be actually no, that's stupid as well. Not all of the trains go from Bedford to Brighton. Some terminate St Pancras, some terminate um, some other places. I need to look up the timetable. I should really not be speculating all of this stuff. But the, the point I was trying to make is Thameslink and Crossrail are the two main compass routes of London. So one is east to west and one is north to south. You know which ones are which. Crossrail is east to west, Thameslink is north to south. And it's going to be great when it's finished. And the money was well spent, I feel, in those areas. Some people will argue against that. But um, I, th I think, again, in order to expand the rail network in Britain as a whole, we had to start in London. Because most people want to get to and from London. They also want to get to and from the airports of London. So Gatwick Express has recently received an upgrade. Stansted Express is due to receive one. Um, Crossrail is going to Heathrow, so there'll be uh, more ways of getting to and from Heathrow, which is the biggest airport, not just in in England, but also one of the biggest in Europe and indeed the world. I think it's one of the. I think it is actually the busiest in terms of airport traffic, which is incredible when you think it's only got two runways. Um, and that sounds inconceivable to some people, but for me, two runways in an airport in Britain is a lot. But then I've looked up places like, you know, when I went to Amsterdam, Schiphol Airport in, in uh, just outside Amsterdam is, is seven or eight runways. That's inconceivable for me. I'm just thinking, how how can they need so many runways? But they use them all, you know? And there's always been talk about Heathrow adding a third runway or a new airport. A whole new airport being built because people don't want a third runway at Heathrow. It's a very, very hotly contested issue. It's right up there with... Uh, with high speed too actually in terms of people hate the idea of a third runway at Heathrow because some local villages nearby will be disturbed and I think a couple will have to be demolished to make way for it and again I'm, I'm actually behind them on this one I feel like if you've lived somewhere for a long long time you have the right to say don't knock my house down to build a runway and I think there's, there's, there's other options available um, you know London has five airports and they're big airports. You know, you've got Heathrow to the southwest, you've got Gatwick to the south, you've got Stansted to the northeast, and you've got Luton to the north, and then you've actually got London City Airport, which is pretty much smack bang in the middle of the city of London, give or take a couple of miles. It's, it's I believe, City Airport is south of London, uh, south of the Thames, and it's sort of near Docklands and Canary Wharf, and it's got plane restrictions. Planes must be able to. Um, take off and land at a certain angle so that they don't hit buildings or cause disruption. So that one's a bit tricky but there's four other major airports around London. Why aren't we looking at them and talking about expanding them? You know, Stansted only has one runway, Luton only has one, Gatwick only has one. If we added a second runway to at least one of those other airports, that will take the congestion away from Heathrow. Admittedly, Heathrow would then lose business but it's it's a very tricky situation. It's not particularly one that I'm that knowledgeable on. But, you know, again, it's about investment. Where does the money go? Where should the money go? Why should the money go there? It's a very tricky one. I should do some more research, really, and then actually bring it up again in a future episode. Right now, guys, I am going to end this episode. Um, we've built this little branch line. I am going to extend some services. At the moment, they're going down to the junction station and then terminating and heading back 
in the future I'd like to extend this service at least down to the next junction station and maybe take out some of the all stopping services that already exist. Uh, there is one all stopping service that I definitely want to retire because it's blocking off other trains but more on that in the future. What I am going to say right now though is thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel be sure to click the subscribe button. If you have already subscribed to my channel thank you guys for your continued support. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and of course if you're enjoying the series. Drop some comments down below for ideas for future episodes and until next time I will see you soon.